The AFTV Nigeria Tour is brought to you by Clasher, the app that allows African consumers to access the goods and services they want internationally without friction. Click the link in the description to download the app and stand a chance to win $1,000 straight to your Clasher wallet to get you started on your shopping adventure. AFTV, Sharoy, we were just watching that on the watch along. Um, very few of us believe that after those three losses to Palace, Brighton and Southampton, we'd still be very much thick and firmly in the top four race. We happen to be leading the pack in that top four race. Well, I say the pack, it seems like it's only us and Tottenham left in it. But how are you feeling? I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I was one of those guys that still thought we had a chance of top four after those three losses, because I, at that point, I just couldn't see where the goals were going to come from and where the results were going to come from, despite the fact that I really wanted us to do it. Well, I can't pretend because I talk about it every week exactly. and every week I'm just up, down, up, down. Exactly, exactly. And then it, if you had told me that after Chelsea, Manchester United and West Ham, we pick up nine points, we score, what is that, nine goals in those three games? Yeah, four against Chelsea, three against United. And two here. Yeah, yeah. And we finished today with Cedric. Um, we finished today with Tavares. We finished today with El Neni. We finished today with Holding. We finished today with, um, with Enketia up front. If you had told me that at the beginning of the season, I would have said, what on earth has happened to our squad? But what Mikel Arteta is doing now is he has, he's not just galvanized the first 11. He's kept people very closely knit in the dressing room to the extent that when they are called upon, they're all playing for the badge equally and they're playing towards a common goal. It's not, it's not easy just to keep an 11 motivated, as we can see from some of the clubs around us. Yeah. Some of them have given up. He's done this for a whole squad, you know, and, it's, and, and I, I, you have to give credit to him for doing that because that man management and that motivation with these young players, it, it, it shouldn't go unnoticed. Yeah, I mean, as you were saying, I was thinking what I would have said if you had told me at the start of the season that going into the last five, six games, El Nene would be key, Holding would be key, Eddie and Ketty would be key. I would have been saying Kronke at. Yeah. I'm still saying Kronke at because I believe there's still a lot more work for him to be doing. But at the same time, these players are key to the mini turnaround that we've had to produce off the back of those three losses. I mean, El Nene coming in and stepping up. Eddie Nketiah, yeah, he got two goals against Chelsea, but his work rate off the ball too has helped a lot. Holding steps up today and he stepped in a couple of times over the last three, four months and managed to be part of holding on to a lead. Any, any club that achieves anything has to rely upon its squad. All right, but the, the reality is we know that even when these players, these squad players that we mentioned are playing at their best, yes, look, I understand it's not good enough to challenge for Premier League titles and it's not good enough to challenge for Champions Leagues. But as a manager, you have to play with the hand that you're dealt to an extent if the board aren't going to give you the players that you want at a particular juncture and you have to get the best out of them. Every last drop. Don't forget, some of these guys are out of contract. These guys are going in the summer. It would be very easy for them to have their heads down and not play for anything. That's not what they're doing under Arteta. So I'm, I want to give the man credit where credit's due. He's done a fantastic job in galvanising them and the belief to go away to Chelsea and then beat Manchester United and do that against West Ham. And we weren't impeccable or perfect in any of those games. Yeah. There were lots of mistakes from us. But sometimes, I know it sounds cliche, to get over the line, you need to want it more. And I think we wanted it more than all three of those teams. And I'd argue it's not sometimes. Every season you're going to have games where you don't perform well. You, you, you scrape a win or you look at the game and think, well, how do we get something from that? But this season we've managed to do that quite often. I mean, not only this one, I mean, Chelsea away, Wolves away, Aston Villa away. We've pulled out some big away wins under the cosh, which you know has led us to be in this position with four games to go. We are fourth, two points above Tottenham. They have Liverpool away next. We have Leeds at the Emirates before we face each other. Are you confident now? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to say that I'm confident, but I, c I can look at all of the games that are about to come and I can tell you where I think we might drop points or where we might win points and other teams might, but I haven't got a clue, mate. Neither do you. Yeah. Neither does anyone watching. So I, I do want to take it game by game, but I can't because I'm an Arsenal fan. And yes, I am a little bit confident that we're going to get there. Now and thinking, exactly, exactly. I can see something there, you know. But I mean, the reality is, I'm grateful to be on a journey with Arsenal Football Club at this part of the season because if I'm being honest in recent years when it comes to the league anyway we haven't really had anything to play for that's been worth our while all right and I know there are lots of Arsenal fans out there that are saying yeah but your standards are in the mud mate top four is nothing I agree that top four isn't a trophy but top four is not nothing it's a step top four is definitely a step towards getting Arsenal Football Club to where they want to be and if Mikel Arteta can galvanize players that are on the way out can galvanize a group of youngsters people might say I'm getting ahead of myself but I would love to see what he can do with experienced high caliber players if they if they believe in him the same way that these youngsters do who knows we might be onto something here man and looking at today's performance it's been it's been a really negative feature of our game in recent weeks where we have taken the lead and then we've given up a really sloppy goal very quickly yeah and that that upset me today as well but what what, what more can you ask for 
you, you go in and your manager has a word, doesn't change anything, and says, all right, put your shirts back on, get back out there and handle business. We get a very quick goal. We then defend a lot better to keep that lead. You know, and, I, and, and a lot of people will talk about Rob Holding, quite rightly, fantastic. Um, but Rob Holding and all of those defenders are under a lot more pressure if Eddie Nketiah doesn't play like a classic lone striker yeah. for that game. He's not six foot four. He's not as wham as Mikel Antonio is. But what does he do? He holds the line. He gives the West Ham back four something to worry about. He retains the ball. He gets, you know, he gets gripped up by his shirt. He's got Declan Rice towering over him. Eddie Nketiah keeps his call, gets in their face and says, no, you're not. I'm keeping the ball mm. today. You know, credit to him, man. Credit to him. He's a young kid. There's been a lot of criti criticism thrown his way because, he, well, fair enough, he hasn't got the goals that he may have got at under-21 level. But he held his own today. A massive respect to him for that. Yeah, I mean, some of those battles with Zuma, he's really putting himself in there. And Zuma's when you look at the size unit. of them, yeah. Yeah, Zuma's another unit. These guys, and Nketiah used to get, and people used to say, this kid just gets bullied off the ball. But no, I mean, the reality is he, he did what he could with the body weight that he has. And he, and he got past a few players and created a couple of decent one-on-ones, forced a good save out of Fabianski, another one he probably should have put away. Mm -hmm. But he, look, again, he's playing for the manager. What I love, man, is that these guys are playing for the badge and the fans know it. We didn't have the speakers on in that watch along, but I guarantee you if the away fans were anything like the away fans for the, for the whole season, that place would have been rocking with our fans yeah, because yeah. our away fans are behind these boys and these boys, are, these boys are giving us something to get behind. And the club, and the club really now need to get behind these boys and get behind the manager. You know, yeah. they, need to, they need to finish this job off. It is, it is quite clearly a process. We're making incremental steps in the right direction. This was a massive three points. Look, we have another relegation threat and threatened team coming up. They're going to come along. They're going to give us a fight. Leeds are not going to be at some pushover team. Everton probably need a win last game of the season. We have to play them. Mm -hmm. You know, Newcastle away, fantastic form, playing some wonderful football. Eddie Howe's done a magnificent job there. We have to go to White Hart Lane. It's all well and good sitting here and saying, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, Arsenal are lucky to be in this position. Tottenham are bottling it. You lot should take it. No, every game is difficult. People are playing for stuff, but so are we. And we're showing so much heart. Personally, I think we want it more than all of them. Perfectly put. Thank you, Sheree.